So we're going to turn now to Arthur Reiser, a law enforcement expert. Mr. Reiser, thank you so much for your time. Um, what, what's your take on everything that you're seeing right now unfold? And uh, what are some of the security precautions, the measures that uh, law enforcement may be taking right now uh, to secure this area? Yeah, this is uh, something new, right? I mean, I think Americans across this country are seeing something they've never seen before. I think that law enforcement, first and foremost, has to you know, ensure that they are safe. Um, we need our, our, our police officers to be safe, and we need them to be ensuring they're taking care of themselves and taking care of uh, the life of those individuals that they are trying to protect. When you're dealing with something um, as serious as this, where you have you know, individuals that have moved from protests into rioting, you know, and, and quite frankly, some of this behavior is treasonous. Uh, I'm not, and I'm not being dramatic. I mean, I'm a criminal law expert as well. Um, they, they, you have to ensure that you use the appropriate amount of force in order to uh, bring back stability. And you know what that force looks like is an individual um, officer's uh, uh, disc, you know going to be an individual officer's discretion, um, as well as uh, police leadership. I do know the Virginia National Guard has also just been called up um, to help support. Um, these uh, efforts. So, you know, we're going to see a, a, a very serious response to this. I mean, this is a little bit different than what we saw this last summer, um, where the police, uh, 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 the, the protesting against police turned into rioting. I mean, this is, you know, in essence, a direct attack on the sovereignty of the United States and on uh, the constitutional process. This is serious. I mean, we should take it seriously. And I think our law enforcement professionals are doing just that. We knew that there was going to be a pretty big protest today with the uh, certification of uh, Joe Biden's victory on Capitol Hill. So right. uh, in your opinion, were they prepared for this? It doesn't appear they were prepared for this, but again, this is relatively new. Um, I do think that it, they seem slow to respond in the sense of getting enough officers um, on scene quickly. You know, Capitol Police is relatively small, but they are reinforced with other law enforcement agencies in the uh, the city of D.C., as well as the, the Washington, D.C. National Guard. Um, it, it does appear that they, they may have been a bit slow, but at the same time, um, you saw officers in their proper gear um, on scene relatively quickly, you know, within, you know, 15 minutes of, of, of this happening. Um, so, yeah, I would say knowing that there was that amount of uh, individuals on scene, uh, maybe they could have been more prepared, had more officers um, suited up. But, you know, with everything being said, I mean, this all happened within, you know, 40 minutes from start to finish. Um, and I think that they, they appear to be responding um, in the best way possible. And they seem now to have a, a pretty good grasp um, over the situation. And I'm hoping that there's no uh, loss of life or anybody gets individuals um, across the spectrum. When might we more from law enforcement themselves about, you know, what is happening inside that Capitol building? Are people safe? Are they secure? Right. So the first thing that's going to happen is they're going to ensure that uh, whatever life they need to protect is is protected, both officers and the individuals they're trying to uh, protect. That is going to be you know, members of Congress and, and their staff. They're also going to ensure that individuals that are out there um, rioting and protesting in some cases are safe as well. Once they have that, the second category that they move to is going to be ensuring that property is protected. Once they have those two things kind of under control and they feel like they have established that, you'll start seeing um, a, a police leadership get on uh, camera and making statements. You'll see the mayor get on camera and start making statements. I would uh, I would uh, guess that by tonight, we're going to have some type of glimpse of what's going on. Um, we, you also, we also know that there's, there are reporters that are inside um, the Capitol building right now, and I'm sure that we'll start getting um, reports from them as well. Yeah, it's obviously a, a scary situation. You hope that yeah. people are safe and secure. We know that there has been reports uh, from the Associated Press that one person has been shot. We are trying to get more information on that person's condition and who they are. Uh, Mr. Reiser, have you seen anything like this? This seems like a pretty remarkable situation as we get, as you see the office of the president-elect Joe Biden um, uh, slogan in the back, our banner in the background, we are uh, getting ready to bring you um, Mr. Biden's remarks. But while I have Mr. Reiser, um, I want to get your sense of 
how you can compare this moment to in American history. This just seems like a remarkable, yeah. remarkable moment with what we're seeing on Capitol Hill. Can you compare it to any other time? I, I think that the only thing we could compare it to is maybe some of the pro, uh, protesting that turned into riots over the summer where they, they charged into to official buildings. But this is a little bit different in the sense that they are directly attacking the, the constitutional process. I mean, in many cases, this is treason. I mean, this is you're trying to disrupt um, the, the process that this country is based on. And I think that is uh, significant. And not, no, I don't think we definitely haven't seen it in my lifetime. Um, I think, you know, I was a police officer in Seattle during the WGO riots in the Seattle area. And I think that, you know, we saw some of that um, extreme rioting in that case. But I haven't seen anything like it since. And, and the impact of this, I think, is incredibly significant um, in what they're actually trying to upset. So I would say this is unique and we need a unique response. And I'm hoping that the law enforcement officers have the, the, the tools needed to do so. And right now to our viewers, this is actually a, a live shot in inside the chamber. Establish this shot here. This is the uh, the House Gallery. You see some um, some people ducking. Members of Congress. What do you need? To your left, ducking. And what is apparently a, a chaotic scene? You heard some shouting in the background. We're not sure what that was. Um, one person wearing what appears to be a gas mask, right to your left there, with the cell phone. But. Uh, truly a chaotic scene and I just want to sit with this in, in, in case we see anything else one person shot at the US Capitol their condition is unknown but we don't know um, any other details right now ab about what is happening inside the halls of Congress This is all playing out. Um, these protesters made their way reportedly into the Capitol. We've, we've heard reports of broken glass. Uh, we saw that picture that we've shown you a couple times of an officer, security guard, um, drawing their gun um, towards one of the doors in, in what looked like a way to protect the chamber in just a, an incredible moment we are watching unfold as they're being told to get down, get down. That's what I heard. That loud bang you heard was the firing of some weapon system. It could be uh, a, a instrument used to um, shoot off pods that give tear gas. It could have been a firearm, but it's clearly it was clearly a, a shot fired by a, some type of weapon system, whether it was lethal or less than lethal weapon system. I, I'm not sure, but that that sound right there you just heard, that's the way that sound is.